See what, um, like, you know, find out what the whole process was. We more, more than be happy to sit down and talk with you. Um, also, I would, at this time, I would be remiss if I forgot to meant to say thanks to our season sponsors, Harrisburg Midtown Arts Center, um, the uh, Econ um, Dalton County Economic Development Corporation, our very special friends over at the Broad Street Market, and please, let's all give them a round of applause for go ahead and helping us out and keeping this thing going. Awesome. How many times, how many people out there, is this your first time coming to an RC Theater Company production? Raise your hand. Awesome! So glad that you're out here. Let me tell you a little bit about us, what we do. Established in 2016, Narcisse Theater Company is an African-American-led, multicultural, nonprofit theater or a theater company and arts organization. A little bit about us, and ever like, part of our mission, half of our season, every single year, is programming dedicated to original plays and works by local, play, local playwrights and performance arts. Also, we never, ever, ever, ever charge more than $15 for a ticket. And every single Sunday matinee, as you well know, is any old donation, any size donation gets you a ticket because we never want money become, to come in between you and us, you being our audience. And also, just like to say that um, this run of this, pro, of this show, uh, all the way to the 30th, every single performance is dedicated to two people. The first being the legendary, groundbreaking actor, Mr. Sidney Poitier, and also to Mr. Lawrence Brown Sr., who um, the father of uh, the um, actor, the fine young actor who was playing um, uh, Nadine in tonight's play, who passed away um, over um, shortly before the holidays. Our thoughts and prayers are with um, Isaiah and his family. So, um, at, uh, there's, let me check one more thing, make sure that we got everything. Okay. All right, that's all I think we have for now. So, at this time, please sit back, relax, and enjoy Narcisse Theater Company's production of Paul Hood's original play, Kill Keller. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's wrong with you? 
Nothing. Well, nothing. You look like something. Just tired. Tired make your lipstick out like that? Huh? Your lip. The bottom one. Sticking out like you're waiting for a bed to come perch on it. I'm just tired from playing basketball. Every day you go out there, you come back in here sucking. Now I know you, and I know you ain't just tired. So you wanna talk to me about it, or you wanna talk to your stepdad about it? No, I just, I don't want to talk. You don't, Dad? No, just, I just played bad, and they kept calling me Oki, and they said I looked like Manu Bull. Who that? You know, tall, skinny African. Never mind. Now, why are you always crying about what the boys say about you at the playground? Every day you go out there, you come back in here crying. They're in the house already. We mad at them kids at the playground. Mad. I'm mad. What you mad about? I'm not. You in the house before the sundown, you must be mad about something. I'm I'm alright. Then go to the store for me. I need a cigarette. Yeah, me too. Uh where are you going? Going to use the bathroom. You ain't stumping up them steps with his attitude. I, I don't have an attitude. Get that ball out of here. Get it together. And come on and go to the store before they close. Okay. Okay. What? Okay, sir. Hurry up! Am I late? Lucky one. Where's my bed? Upstairs. Not. I know why. It was busting on him again over at the courts. Well, they still let him get under his kid, huh? I guess. Were you playing with him? Nah, uh, they won't let him play with us no more. Who's Dave? The dudes at the basketball court. They're always saying how now Dave can't jump and stuff, and he be getting mad and walking off the court. And then we looking for somebody to take his place. That boy is too sensitive for his own good. Too soft in the middle. I done told y'all how these streets is, you can't let them get you. If they see you soft in the air, pray on you. What time is it? What did them boys say to him? I bet it wasn't nothing. They didn't start saying much until he got mad and started walking off the court with the ball. It was the only ball we had. Wouldn't go to the same boys that took the last ball y'all had out there? Nah, no, nah, they let his friends use that that day we came in for dinner. Oh, he lose his mind when he's hungry. And he's gonna have to learn he can't give his stuff away so easily. Can't be too nice. These streets earn you the right to be selfish. I'll have a talk with him later. I told him. He's gonna have to take this trash out when he get back to. Tired of him letting it get too cold. So, <clears throat> you tell your mom you think about joining the military? I think so. <clears throat> You think so? How do you think you remember doing something that important? I don't know. 
You don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I just. Well, maybe you need to stay in this week and remember if you told her. What? You heard what I said. I didn't. What did you say? Oh, you trying to be smart now? Maybe you should have kept your mind on law school. Huh? You heard what I said. I quit. Well, now you got to pay a cost to be the boss. You got one week in the house, no TV, no video games. I quit. Quit what? Hiding things from your mom? I, I wasn't hiding. Just forgot. Well, now you got a week to remember. Whatever. What? Here's your cigarettes. No, they Go in there and take out that trash and do them dishes like I asked you. Your son has something to tell me. Tell me? Mom, I told you about wanting to join the Marines, remember? Don't you remember you telling me anything like that? I thought I did. Another week! We're lying! What? A, a week for... Kelly said I can't go outside because I didn't tell you about wanting to join the military. That's the rule. Just a little stupid, don't you think? Well, are you going to be stupid? The rule. The rule is stupid. It don't make sense. Well, now you got some time to make sense of it. Wow. Don't call me. You're just going to let him put me on punishment again for nothing? Uh-uh. You did this to yourself. Uh, yeah, you sure did. The dishes better be clean better than last time. They are. Uh, they are. So if I check them, they're all going to be clean. Yeah. Excuse me. I mean, yes. <laughs> I have half a mind to make you write the word yes a thousand times. Them dishes ain't clean. You gonna come back down here and clean them till they are. <laughs> there he goes, running up the steps, hiding in his room, hiding from his family. He does that every time I'm here. I'm beginning to think he don't like me. He's just a shy kid, you know that. Well, he gonna have to break out of that. Shy don't work around these parts. Shit, you see what they did to him at the playground? Yeah. Kindness, don't feed the bulldog. He's been that way since we moved here from Middletown. Just give him some time to adjust. His spine needs to thicken. It. Change its color from yellow. <coughs> hey, you got a problem? No. You throwing things that ain't yours, that's a problem. What I throw? Don't talk back to me and my homeboy. Talking back, I asked, what did I throw? Boy! I miss living in Middletown, too. It was nice there. Quiet at night, and the people were nice. Well, that ain't nothing wrong with where you live now. As a matter of fact, it's better that you live here. The problem was you live around them white people. Mm. Now you done lost your place. That's what's wrong with your brother. Ain't nothing wrong with anything except the way y'all react. You. You need to stop being so smart out of being timid. People can smell the fear on you like a like a dog can. You know dogs don't like it when you're scared of. Oh, okay. When Clay knows he's a smart one. Hey, yeah, two smart boys on the good. That mouth and that pea brain in his go get him in trouble. You got to pay the cost to be the boss. Just give him some time to adjust. It's different here. It's, it's not like... There ain't nothing to adjust to. It's just time to knuckle up.
Don't like it here, Mom. We just gonna hop to like it. You think Jesus did what he did for our sins so you cannot like a simple sacrifice I made for you and all day? Why did we move here? Why can't we stay in Middletown? I was almost done with school. Kids think I'm weird here because I like books and I'm smart. They're jealous. Your brain is bigger than their egos and that is scary to people who don't take it the same ways that you do. And we hard to move. We get tired of that landlord. He never fixed nothing. And I couldn't afford it anymore. Keller asked me to marry him. I say yes, and that's that. Fate and God brought us here. And I am just following the Lord's guidance. Is the Lord always right, Mom? He never steered me or us in the wrong direction. Are you sure? Boy, are you questioning my decision? Are you questioning the Lord's decision? I get. I guess I'm just asking if the Lord made the best decision for all of us. You weren't there when I couldn't put food on the table for your brother. You weren't there when I had to get a second job and leave him alone in a house that was sometimes cold and dark because I couldn't pay the electric and heat. I had to rob Peter to pay Paul and I wanted something different for us. None of your boyfriends ever liked us, Mom. Not one. Mike was drunk all the time and hurt you. John gambled and broke our toys if we let him sit in the middle of the floor. Slow your roll, McClay. You're paddling somewhere you ain't got no business paddling. There's nothing here for me but ridicule. So you're joining the army, huh? No. Marines. Your father was in the Marines. Came back crazy, drinking like a fish and chasing after every woman that wasn't in any way like me. Loved messing with them white girls too, just like you. Here you are following his part. I see you frolicking with them white girls down at the playground. They're friends, Mom. We come here and all your friends are exactly the same as in middle time. White? Bright and right in your eyes and mind. Red and yellow, black and white, we're all precious in his sight, right, Mom? The white girls. And that boy, what's his name? Alibi, Alibi, or whatever. Alibi. Mm. And he's the only one who talked to me when we first moved here. I don't know if you know this, but there are going to be all kinds of people with me at boot camp, just like our neighborhood on Hand Street. The same kind of people that you let Kevin and keep out of our lives. He gets drunk with all kinds of people at the bar. I have someone who loves me for a change. Kella is a good man, and y'all need to appreciate it. Is that why you're joining the military? Are you trying to get away from us? I just need money for college and law school. <laughs> you still want to be a lawyer? It's all I've ever wanted. Well, we ain't got the money to help you. I told you, once you turn 18, that's it. I'm done. I can do it myself. Oh, and how are you going to do that? The Marines will help. Oh, they will, huh? I thought you knew that. Guess I didn't want to. Guess I'd rather you skip going off to boot camp. Them boys still coming up with Bush said them to in the Gulf. I've been talking about this for months now. Leaving brochures on the table, getting letters in the mail. A recruiter came to see me at school. I thought you knew. You would be proud. You've always been the smart one. So I figured you had a plan. You were 10 years old when you said you wanted to be a lawyer. I gave a chunk of my life to your daddy. And he was good for nothing when he came back from Vietnam. Guess I'm just scared you're going to change in the same way he did. He came back a different man. And not for the better. I won't change. I'll come back better than I am now. So you won't come back arguing with your stepdad 
drinking hard liquor, and sleeping with white women? I can't promise I won't argue with Keller, but as for the other stuff... You should swear to it. Put your right hand on this Bible. I can't deal with Keller, Mom. That smart mask gonna get you laid out someday. He puts us on punishment for everything, and you let him. Because he cares. Now, whether you like it or not, he's your daddy, and he's always gonna be your daddy. Your real dad left us. I left. He wasn't doing right by any of us. I wish we never would have gone to Alabama that summer we moved here. It's like we came back to a nightmare. Miss our old house, our friends. You even gave our dog away. Boy, get your narrow bombs to upstairs and go check on your brother. Tired of being a joke! Tired of being a gopher around this house, too! Well, I just won't. 
fight people now, and you first for practice. The fight you want and need is with Keller. <laughs> how is it you were never my brother when I need you? How is it you never my brother on the playground? Sometimes I gotta let you handle stuff on your own. The problem is, you don't. Oh, oh, when they walked off with my ball that day, you walked right off with them. You remember that? What are you talking about? Oh, amnesia now, huh? They took my ball, Clay. You got the ball back? Two weeks later. And whose fault was that? They were just playing with you. They gave you the ball back and they still let you play. <laughs> just like Uncle D in that excellent Being a bitch, stand up and be a man. Why can't I just be a kid? We can't be kids. We do kid shit around here when we get in trouble. You know that. We get stifled for muddling through and making errors, so nah. That kid shit is for the playground, and that's where it stays until we get out of here. You wouldn't. Wouldn't what? Get in trouble! That's what! You were always the golden boy because you were allowed to spend time at Mama Bean's house living in luxury while we sat at Grandma's house eating bologna ketchup sandwiches and plums and peaches we picked off a tree with bugs all over them. They said it was chocolate. How was I supposed to know? It looked like chocolate. So I ate it when they gave me some. What kind of family gets aggravated by a kid who simply wants to eat? Every time I said I was hungry, it was still a big deal. There was never any food at Grandma's house. You could have come to Beans. Oh, and be around the golden boy. Ain't nobody golden. Who got to live with Bean for two years and not have to deal with mom's mean fussy self? And her drunk ass boyfriend's calling him black this and black that and picking on him while he slept. And I had people talking about him like he was some ugly zoo animal at her ghetto ass parties. Who gets a birthday card on his birthday every year with money? Are you even my real brother? All you do is ignore me and brag about yourself all the time. Yo, now you're just making stuff up. Like I said, the fight you want is with Keller, not me. And you gotta stop letting people clown you if it bothers you so much. Why don't you grow some real nuts and stop acting all soft and salty? Fuck you! Y'all in here fighting again? No. I heard y'all way outside before I come in. I'm going outside. Oh, no one's going outside until this house clean. The house isn't dirty. Boy, shut up your mouth. Young brothers, you're supposed to love and protect each other. All y'all do is fight. I never hear y'all do nothing else. Now get this thing house cleaned up before Keller gets home. And I don't want to hear another word of your narrow, bouncy mouths. And pick up that damn remote! Told you the house wasn't dirty. <laughs> She's starting to act just like him. She's scared, just like you. Why are you always talking about how I'm scared? You ain't scared? <laughs> Nothing scares me. Keller threatened to kick our ass the first day we came here. Do you remember that? Yeah, so what? It's all mind games with him. No. It's more than mind games. He's going to end up killing one of us. I sleep with one eye open every night wondering if he's gonna come into one of our rooms and put a bullet in one of our heads because we forgot a dirty dish we left in the sink or we forgot one of Mom's Bible words. You're just being dramatic. Stop drinking a Kool-Aid. The only thing he killed was the happiness you had in Middletown. He killed you being excited about going to high school with the kids we grew up with. 
He killed your comfort. That's life. Get over it. The sooner you realize that, the easier it'll be, and he'll leave you alone. He killed things you like too. You didn't stop me from going to the Marines. That's all I want now. He tried. He tried to make mom talk you out of it. But I'm still going. You know, sometimes I wish. Don't say it. Sometimes I wish he was dead. When you wish death on somebody, it comes back to you. Death is better than walking through a land of my fields. Look, mom's right. We gotta stop fighting. <laughs> Feels like I have to fight just to get through the day. I literally have to fight just to be myself. I think you are too hard on me. You gotta start being okay with who and what you are. Everybody wants me to be like you or what they think. People like you, man. You just let things get to you too much. You said you didn't like me once. I love you, man. You're my brother. Yeah, I say shit and mess with you, but that's, that's, that's normal. I just want you to be okay and get through when I leave. Yeah, you get on my nerves, but that's what brothers do. That's the other side of love. It looks and feels different. I'm tired of the game. Then leave. Ain't nobody even tell us how spotless. Nadine, go take out the trash. But, but nothing. Do as I ask. I'll do it. But somebody gets it out of here. Trash collectors come tomorrow. Yes, landmines. About 15 minutes ago, I sat out on the porch and looked. You look like you saw a ghost. Huh? Did something happen today? I said you look like you saw a ghost. Are you still having them headaches? I told you to go to the doctor. I don't need to see no doctor. Mm. You say that, and then you drop dead somewhere and that's that. That's how strokes start. You start getting headaches, then you get tired, you fall asleep, you wake up unable to move, talk, even see. Happened to my late uncle. The doctor said he had locked in syndrome. He was 55 when he passed. I'm fine. Just, just regular headaches, nothing to worry about. Maybe it's migraines. Wait, I remember you told me once you couldn't see because your head hit so bad. It could be that you're having a problem with migraines. I'm fine. Where is my gin? You need that right now? You should go lie down. I need cigarettes too. You gonna tell me what happened? A little boy jumped out in front of my bus today. Are you serious? Uh, jumped right out in front of me. I didn't even see him. Did you hit him? Oh, almost. Lord have mercy. I 
would have killed him. Kids these days not paying attention to what they're doing. Uh, playing, not not looking at what's going on around them. You got that right. <sighs> Everybody on the bus was yelling and screaming. I pulled the bus over to make sure everybody was all right, and they looking at me like I'm crazy. One baby got off the bus four blocks before it stopped. A little baby was crying in the back of the bus. I couldn't tell who was holding him, a man or a woman. Oh, everything, every, everything was a blur. <laughs> and after everything calmed down, that's when I got this damn headache. <sighs> I think it's because you're having the migraines. Baby, they are getting worse. You need to go see a doctor. Was your vision blurry all day? I'm all right. How many times do I have to tell you? I just didn't see the boy run out in the street. What makes you think it's migraine? Maybe I'm just stressed. Where's Nardane? Outside, probably at the playground. Oh, he ain't walking around the block and then coming in and out running up to his room anymore? He's getting used to being here. Well, when he gets in here, I need him to go to the store for me and get some cigarettes before it gets dark. You gave me an attitude. I don't have You an do. I came in as 
soon as mom called. Or where you came in with an attitude, like we bother you. <coughs> what, you don't like it here? Well. You want to move? I. Well, if you don't, you can go live with your <coughs> grandmother down in Alabama. I <coughs> want to live in Alabama. What is the problem then? I don't have a problem. You better learn how to act like you're more grateful for what you got. I am thankful. You don't act like it. You don't. Oh, you come home mad. <coughs> now how do you know what I do when I come in this house? I live here. Don't talk back to him. I'm just talking. But you have a tone. Can I go back outside? It's not going to be dark. No, no, you wait for the night. What? What did I tell what? you about? You just stay in for the rest of the week until you can learn how to respect me and this house. Get that boy out of here and go clean the kitchen like you're supposed to. Yeah. Gun. 
You didn't know? Nah. You don't have a gun. He does. Remember that time he came looking for you because he wanted to beat you in front in front of everybody because you didn't come home on time? Yeah. He left the house with a gun. It was small and he tucked it behind his shirt. I didn't say anything because... Nah, nah, he don't got a gun. You make stuff up in your head when you're mad. That's why I don't want to be here. He's crazy. He's always talking about he's going to kick our asses or kill us. What you thought, he was just saying that? People say stuff all the time, don't mean they mean it. Well, his crazy ass means it. <laughs> he wasn't going to do anything. You like him! Are you out of your mind? Why would I like him? That's why you're always kissing his ass. I don't kiss nobody's ass. Yeah, you do. Mom yelled at you for kissing John's boat when we used to live in the Genesis Projects. You know that? I'm already snatching you up. Stop kissing that white boy's bouncy! She said. <laughs> Should've seen your face. She only did that because John's a white boy. You know how she feels about white people? <sighs> Let him pull a gun out. And what are you gonna do? Uh, just let him try that shit. You're scared, you said you were. Well, don't start with me. Do you remember what I did to you a couple months ago? No day! <laughs> no day! No day! You call me mom. <laughs> yeah? Come out and get the rest of them groceries out the car. Nice of you help too. Well, shut up. I'm doing something. No, just doing nothing but being nosy. Boy, go get the rest of them groceries. But. But nothing. Do as I ask. How comes Clay never has to do anything around here? You have to worry about yourself. But it's not fair. Life ain't always fair. God made it that way to teach us and make us stronger. Now go get your narrow mom to stay outside and get the rest of the groceries. No. What? You heard me. I'm done being the Hebrew slave in this house, boy. <laughs> now I'm only going to say it one more time. Get your narrow flop bouncy outside and get them groceries! Hello, Dan here. I need cigarettes. 
No. He ran out of here after back talking me. Well, he can't come back here. Why? Be quiet, McLeod. Don't ask me questions in my house, boy. I quit. Take your ass upstairs. This is why Nardane doesn't want to be here. You make us miserable. Better shut up, McClay. I don't want to do nothing but leave. I have one year left of school, and then I'm off to the Marines. And then I'm a mystery or a dream to you and someone I used to think my mother ever dreamed of. So go ahead. Hit me if you want. I don't care anymore. But give me a chance to live another day so I can come back as a man and fight you like the man I'll be because I was brave enough to leave this soul-sucking house. Now be a 15 minute intermission. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, you know. 